Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Lauren Gerson, Senior Associate Editor for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. It's my pleasure to have with me Dr. Mona Rizabor, who's a second year uh, gastroenterology fellow at California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco. We're here today to discuss our paper published in the upcoming issue of GIE entitled Retention Associated with Video Capsule Endoscopy, Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. As most of you know, video capsule endoscopy has been available in the United States since 2000, and its main indication is for evaluation of patients with suspected small bowel bleeding, inflammatory bowel disease, and other suspected small bowel disorders. It measures approximately 11 by 26 millimeters, and the main feared complication is potential retention, which has been cited to occur at approximately 1 to 2% of patients with bleeding, but anywhere from 13% even up to 25% of patients with uh, Crohn's disease, particularly in the pediatric population. So the main indication for the study was to systematically analyze retention rates associated with capsule endoscopy when administered for different uh, indications. Go ahead. For our method, for, thank you. For our method section, we did a comprehensive literature review in PubMed and Scopus. Uh, we were, uh, the comprehensive literature review was done from uh, 1995 uh, to 2015, we were looking at studies that um, were on ca video capsule endoscopy and reported their retention rates. We were specifically looking at studies that reported retention rates for uh, small bowel bleeding over uh, and or cold, um, inflammatory bowel disease divided into suspected and established, and abdominal pain and or diarrhea. We further did a, a, a sub-analysis looking at those studies that had done a patency capsule or a CT or MR enterography um, to, uh, to um, uh, um, look at uh, strictures in patients um, prior and uh, uh, in patients who um, had strictures on patency capsules and uh, excluding those patients and then uh, further doing a video capsule endoscopy um, uh, and reporting their retention rates for the video capsule endoscopy. From a statistical point of view, we perform a standard meta-analysis using a program called Comprehensive Meta-Analysis and calculated pooled retention rates for each of the various categories. We then constructed forest plots that are shown in the paper and did publication, ended uh, analysis of potential uh, publication bias if there were more than 10 studies in each category. For the patients with uh, suspected small bowel bleeding, the overall retention rate was approximately 2%, and uh, the most common cause was strictures in more than 50% of the patients, uh, most of the time due to either NSAIDs or Crohn's disease in close to 47% of the patients, and this required about 60% of the cohort to undergo surgical uh, resection. We don't know exactly in how many cases enteroscopy was attempted, as this technology was only available in the U.S. after 2004. Um, for inflammatory bowel disease, we uh, for suspected patients, these are patients who have uh, symptoms consistent with inflammatory bowel disease, the retention rate was 3.6%. Um, uh, um, and again, most of these were due to strictures, about 70% of them. Um, in a, a patients with established IBD, the retention rate was about 8.2%. And again, about 87% of these were due to strictures. Uh, for patients who um, uh, underwent uh, video capsule endoscopy for abdominal pain and or diarrhea, the retention rates were about 2.2%. Uh, about 24% of these were due to strictures. Um, looking at all indications in uh, all of the uh, studies that we analyzed, the retention rate again was about 2%. Um, when on our uh, um, sub-analysis looking at uh, seven studies that uh, performed either a patency capsule or a CT enterography, uh, there were about, um, uh, uh, the retention rates initially with a patency capsule was about 12%, and then once those patients with retention were excluded, uh, the video capsule uh, retention rate was 2.7%, uh, so considerably decreased. Um, about 54% um, of uh, all of the retention rates were due to strictures. Um, uh, 
minority of these patients, about uh, only about 11% developed obstructive symptoms. Um, however, with that number, greater than 50% did undergo surgery uh, to remove the capsule ultimately. So in summary, we showed that patients, according to the guidelines with suspected inflammatory bowel disease or established IBD, continue to have relatively high retention rates. Um, approximately 5% in established patients, and that performing either a patency capsule or an MRI enterography uh, initially had a retention rate of around 12%, but this was reduced to 2.7% after the studies were performed. So it's therefore worthwhile studying these patients prior to administration of a capsule just to avoid the complication of retention. Um, these patients obviously can be managed now with deep enteroscopy to remove the capsule if retained. And um, again, this paper I think is valuable because it helps establish for patients undergoing capsule what the potential for retention is in various indications. Thank you. Thank you.